We came here thinking we would be working as construction laborers, as contracted. We are living from one paycheck to the next, making it tough to send money back home. It's just not right. Myanmar authorities have often urged migrants to migrate through legal routes. It's supposed to guarantee them work and certain rights in the destination country. But that's not the case for an increasing number of MOU migrants in Thailand. And they say they're getting very little help from authorities to resolve their issues. Hello and welcome to Do Athan, a weekly podcast about human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Fondation Hirondelle. This episode is produced by journalists from The Way Watch. Names and voices may have been changed to protect contributors. You know, expectations and reality are totally different things, like oil and water. We were told we would be working with this big company. I kept asking the agency over and over, like, how are we supposed to do our job? I signed up to do construction work. We came here thinking we would be working as construction laborers, as contracted. Gojo is from Thayawadi town in Bago region. He worked as a driver back in Myanmar. But the situation since the military coup made it difficult for him to earn a living. So he pawned his farm and decided to work in Thailand through the Memorandum of Understanding or MOU route. He chose the legal option because he thought it meant more rights and freedom. We came here through an MOU contract which guarantees the company will be responsible and accountable. We can go anywhere without fear or worry. Gojo went through a licensed overseas job placement agency. He and about 30 other workers paid between 20 and 28 lakhs for the placement. That's between 950 and 1300 US dollars at official exchange rates. According to the official rate for placements set by the Ministry of Labor, they should have paid no more than about $350. They arrived in Thailand in July this year with contracts to work at a construction company in Dak province. But they never worked at that company. Gojo says they were sold on to a business in the south of Thailand for 5,000 baht each. They worked there for over a month, but they didn't receive the pay they were promised and their work schedule was irregular. What's more, their documents were held by the employer. When the workers asked for their proper wages and their documents, the boss allegedly asked for 13,000 baht from each of them, or about $350. The group complained to a migrants' assistance group and the agency then claimed it was a misunderstanding. The group was then sent to another construction site where they are now working more regularly. Gonelin Thu is with the Aid Alliance Committee, or AAC, which helps migrants in Thailand. He sees many cases like this where workers don't get jobs at the companies specified in their contracts, or the agencies promise more jobs than are actually available at the company. There are even cases where agencies only look for jobs once the workers arrive in Thailand. It's like human trafficking for these people. You see, when they sign up as MOU workers for a specific business, let's say a factory needing 100 workers, there should actually be 100 workers needed. But in reality, no one works in that factory they get sent to different workplaces. The agencies buy letters of employment and it's like they're selling the workers legally. Gozor is only 20 years old, but he wanted to help support his family in Zagain region. So he paid a broker and a different licensed job agency more than 19 lakhs, about $900, for an MOU job in Thailand. He and about 12 others were brought to Thailand by the agency in August. They were supposed to get jobs in Samut Prakan, but Gozor has never even been there. He worked briefly in Pechaburi and Ayutthaya and lived on a fish farm without work for a month. He's now in Phuket, but still not getting full-time work. People come here to earn money to support their families, but the work is all over the place. Right now, we work for a week, 
and then have to take a whole week off. We are living from one paycheck to the next, making it tough to send money back home. It's just not right. Doa Than spoke with four groups of MOU workers who came to Thailand and have had problems since July this year. The issues they faced included wages not being paid or not paid fully, not being given jobs that the company agreed on in the contract, living in poor conditions, for example, where the rain leaks in, and being sent to other companies because the original work they were contracted for was already done. Being sent on to other companies is problematic for workers because under the MOU system, their documents are only valid for the company they're initially contracted with. Some workers also told Doathan that they've been asked to switch their official documents to pink cards. This is sometimes because the company is sending them on to another business, or because the company already employs pink card workers and doesn't want the extra paperwork of having to process two kinds of workers. Gonelin Thu from the AAC says exploitation and rights violations of migrant workers is not new, but he says it is on the increase. When I came to Thailand, there were some workers who hadn't worked for two or three months, even though they came here with an MOU. In the past, before the queue, there were only a few cases like that. Usually the problem was that they were not getting paid. But now more and more workers are facing difficulties because they haven't got a job and their passports have been taken. Not only are problems increasing, but workers say that the labor attaches at the Myanmar embassy are less responsive these days. They rarely answer calls. A labor attache who spoke to Doa Than insisted that they do answer calls when they're not busy. He also said MOU migrants are only sent to the workplaces mentioned in the contracts and it's impossible for them to find themselves without work. No MOU worker ends up without a job here. They would come here with an MOU and even if they were unable to go to the relevant workplace, we would step in to help by linking them up with a Myanmar agency to explore other locations. So there's really no situation where workers don't land a job here. That's not what workers and labor organizations told us. There are at least a dozen groups helping migrant workers in Thailand. All the groups Doa Than spoke to said they're dealing with more complaints. The AAC says that since the COVID-19 crisis, they alone have helped resolve MOU violation issues for about 1,000 workers from more than 50 agencies. And there are currently about 50 workers from 10 different agencies seeking shelter at the AAC office. A spokesperson from the Worker Assistance Group for Myanmar said they're helping at some risk to themselves because agencies can threaten them with lawsuits. Gomin U from the Foundation for Education and Development said the agencies and the government should work together to solve these problems. <laughs> It is the job of the agencies and the relevant government departments to check and make sure the workers get what they were promised and give full support and all. If only they take responsibility and accountability, you know, everything is linked together. But between the workers, the labor groups, the agencies and the embassy, resolving things takes time and this does not always run smoothly. This leaves people like Gozor struggling to survive, feeling hopeless about any kind of resolution and just not sure what to do next. To tell you the truth, I regret signing a contract with the agency. They couldn't do anything. We we're all desperate here. They told us that they would address this and we thought that was the end of the conversation. When we contacted the embassy about this, they replied that the agency would sort it out for us. Well, we are waiting as they told us to do. Thanks for listening to this edition of Do Than. We would welcome your feedback on social media. This project on human rights reporting is supported by Fondacion Hirondel with the help of our donors. You can listen to our podcast via the Do Than Facebook page. They can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. Please tune in again next week.